Welcome to Nevada News Make is coming to you from the Las Vegas Metro Chamber. On the broadcast today, Tick Segaloon, the Clark County Commissioner, and the father, I would say, of marijuana in Nevada for the whole show on an all-new Nevada News Make. From your house to the White House, the folks at D&D Roofing can get it fixed with their eyes closed. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management is the place where companies can find workers' comp solutions that are designed to meet their specific business requirements. As regulations evolve, Pro Group takes a proactive approach to clear the path to make sure your business stays ahead of the curve. Knowing your workers' comp program is optimized, you can focus on other important matters related to your growing business. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Safety is the number one priority for the trucking industry. Over $7 billion a year is spent on technology, like this electronic eye, that will apply the brakes automatically. But the most important factor for safety is the truck driver. These hardworking men and women who safely move over 70% of our nation's freight and 94% of Nevada's. We thank you because trucks move America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers Broadcast Headquarters, here is Sam Shea. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, coming to you from the Las Vegas Metro Chamber. We're delighted to welcome back to the program, now officially, Clark County Commissioner Tick Segeblum. Pleasure to have you back on the program, sir. Pleasure to be here. Um, so let's start out with the session and... You know, the thing that at this point you're probably most famous for is your, your promotion of legalized marijuana in the state. And now the governor says we're going to have basically a two-year moratorium while his new commission figures out what's going on as far as these recreation lounges going on. I have a funny feeling you are not a happy man to hear about this. <laughs> well, truth is, you know, he's the governor, and, and if that's what he wants, then, then more power to him. But um, I really was uh, looking forward to being in local government and starting that process, you know, pilot programs and things. So to wait two years is, is kind of frustrating, but, you know, we, we've done this before and, and um, you just have to live with it. Right. I mean, you know, we had to wait 13 years uh, for marijuana to go from being legalized to being available. Um, but the city of Las Vegas had already authorized a recreation lounge. That's toast? It is. You know, as far as I know, everything's going to just have to hold for two years. Um, the funny part is the, the articulated reason was, well, we want the, the Cannabis Control Commission to evaluate it and see how it's going before we, and then come back with recommendations for the 2021 session. But if there's no model, pilot programs to evaluate, you know, what are they going to do? Right. So, yeah. Well, and the other thing is you've already been on the tour. You've already seen these recreation lounges in other locations. So, you know, they could come to you and get the same input they're going to get from going around to any other locations and the jurisdictions. Yeah, and you know, the reality is we are the gold standard for gaming, not because we, in 1955 or whatever it was, we said, okay, we're going to make the best loss in the world. We started slow and you just evolve. You, know, you, you try things, you experiment, but you can't just, from whole cloth, create the best laws in the world. So that's why experimentation and pilot programs, you know, trial and error, um, tweaking, that's how you get there. And, and so uh, we are going to be slow, but at the end of the day, I would bet in four years, we're still perceived as the Amsterdam of the West. I mean, it, it's just, it's so close and so perfect for Las Vegas that uh, maybe we have to wait till it becomes federally illegal, but at some point, it's just going to be part of our culture. 
And, and that's an interesting point. Be, you know, and let's get back to that, the federally legal portion of it. Um, what's been interesting to me is to observe the police departments, both uh, Washoe County, Clark County, um, and also um, the uh, Utah uh, State Patrol, uh, Colorado State Patrol. They are dealing with this as the law has changed, it's legal now, we are not going to go, and I, I'm paraphrasing, but we're not going to go crazy trying to bust people for marijuana. You know, the, the people have spoken. And yet, our governor and our legislature have, have acted as though the people haven't spoken. Well, again, uh, you know, I wasn't there. I don't know the dynamics to it, but... Um, Did you put a call into the governor? <laughs> I, I didn't. Uh, but I, I, you know, I, I talked to Bryn Gibson, his assistant, and... Um, you know, the reality is this was just something that the industry, the, the gaming industry wanted. They felt they needed some protection. Um, and so uh, it is what it is. So we just okay, okay, so so I'll ask you, protection from what? Well, they say it's because they're concerned about their license and the federal involvement. Um, I think it's probably just protection from competition. You know, if you can look at the numbers for Planet 13, which is right there behind Treasure Island, they're seeing 3,000 customers a day. Average sale is, is $90 um, a person. I think that's just a lot of money that's being sucked out of the strip. And they saw that and said, you know, if we can wait two years and pull it into the hotels, that's a better benefit for us. But, but that's, that's speculation. Okay, speculation, but uh, warranted speculation. Uh, because, I mean, at one point, uh, we had Bob Grosbeck on the show during session, and he was talking about they were, they were uh, arguing about uh, whether it should be 1,000 feet from a casino or 1,500 feet from a casino. Uh, you know, it, would, it, it was just a, a question of numbers at that point. But I looked at it, and, and again, this is my own speculation, um, is that when the men's clubs really took off, you know, 15 years ago or so, um, that took about 30 million a year out of the casinos, and they were not happy about that. And I guess in the end, the nightclubs, the swimming clubs, and all the rest uh, brought you know more money back to the casinos. I don't know the end of the gentlemen's clubs, obviously, um, but that they were concerned that they were going to see that kind of loss. And you sound to me like you're basically agreeing with that. Right, and the truth is that's where it belongs. I mean, it, 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 the, most of the restaurants and things in the casinos now are all sublet to, to companies, they, they just rent the space. One of those could certainly be a pot lounge, um, one of those could be a marijuana massage parlor. I mean, all these things that we're talking about doing. That's the uh, first I've heard of that one, the marijuana massage parlor, wow. <laughs> like, can, can I get in on that? Listen, when you're ready, uh, I'll tell you, everybody who's had one says that they're, they're um, unbelievable. Um, so yes, I mean, I, I, I had joked that, uh, you know, when this becomes federally legal, um, that uh, the nicest marijuana lounges in the world are going to be in hotel casinos right across from the $100 plate buffet. <laughs> well, and also they're going to be part of the, the $1,000 a plate dinner. I mean, they're, they're, they will be infused dinners. They will be, I mean, it, 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 the range is from the top to the bottom as far as the, the customers. But, and it's not for everybody, but why not make it part of what people do? And people come here for fun. Some people may want to do it. Maybe some people may not. But but it ought to be part of what's available. The only, and the, really, the only problem I have with it is, right now we um, we're probably making you know five hundred thousand misdemeanors a year for out-of-state customers coming here, selling them something which we know they cannot legally use in Nevada, and that to me is is just is a little duplicitous. And, um, but that's just the, that's reality. Well, and the other reality is, and I'm staying, you know, on the strip, and as I walk through the parking garage, there is a certain odor that um, I don't think is animal induced. I believe it's uh, <laughs> the smell of marijuana. I mean, people are consuming the product. It's not like they're not. Yeah, and the police basically have said hands off unless you smoke it right in front of them. And I bet if you smoked it right in front of them, they'd probably just take it and stamp it on the ground or something. So it, 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 it's, it's one of those vices where everybody looks the other way. But it just, be fun to have it so that it's legal and you could say, okay, you go in this room and the world can watch you and you can do anything you want to do with, with marijuana and, and no one's going to complain. Do you think that there's another gaming jurisdiction um, that it, it's possible that their state would legalize recreational lounges? Oh, absolutely. Colorado just passed a law. Um, you know, Massachusetts has a law. Um, a, lot, a lot of the California's law. I mean, a lot of, you know, a lot of the companies in, in Las Vegas have Indian casinos that they run in, 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 in California. It doesn't seem to be a problem. So it's really, I mean, they, they may say that's the issue, but that's not really the issue.
So again, to restate, what is really the issue? Well, again, I think they just see something taking off and outside of their control, and they want to make sure they're, invo they're involved and have control over it, which is a legitimate business. I mean, I'm not sure that the law should be used to help one side or the other side, but if you have that power, then, then go for it. And there were a lot of gaming executives prior to A.G. Burnett, when he was head of the Gaming Control Board, coming out and saying that, no, you can't be involved, that were ready to be investors in these marijuana companies. Absolutely. I mean, they, they can see it, too. And, and they know their customers. And, and, and you know, the people I've talked to in the industry say, yeah, I mean, our customers love marijuana. A lot of them do. And, and we love having the lounges there. And we're happy to use our shuttles to go take them over there and bring them back. But, but again, it's, it, when you look at the bigger picture, it's probably just too much money. And, and the thought that it would get out of control uh, may be the problem. And we're only talking about two years. OK. All right, let's take a break. More with Tick right. Seglum when we come back. Tamarack Junction is South Reno's hotspot with over 450 of the latest slots and video games. Sully Sports Bar, the Dining Car Restaurant, William Hill Sportsbook, and the Tamarack Steakhouse and Lounge. We're just north of the Summit Mall in South Virginia. Yeah. Ahern Rentals began as Signal Gas Station on Las Vegas Boulevard. Founder John Ahern grew the business by offering rentals. His son Don built on John's legacy, growing Ahern Rentals into the largest independently owned American rental company with 89 locations in 30 states. Don also brought his experience and vision to equipment manufacturing with Extreme Manufacturing and Snorkel. Today, Ahern Rentals continues to bring its family values to a new generation. Learn more at ahern.com. Hi, I'm Eric Robnett, owner of Home Energy Experts. Has this ever happened to you? Honey, did you remember to turn down the thermostat? <sighs> Forgetting to set the temperature? Not fun. We can help. Our new smart thermostat keeps the temperature set for your comfort all by itself. I'm feeling hot now. <sighs> to increase your comfort, go to homeenergyexperts.com for details. That's homeenergyexperts.com. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. The Tamarack Junction Steakhouse is known for signature steaks, handcrafted cocktails, and world-class wines. Join us Thursdays and Friday nights from 4.30 to 6.30 in the Steakhouse Lounge for live music, gourmet plates, and well-priced wines just north of the Summit Mall on South Virginia. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're having a conversation with Clark County Commissioner Tick Segablum. Um, how do you rate the governor's first term, former county commissioner? Um... Well, as a legislator, I would say it's, it's the most progressive, uh, most phenomenal session in history. Uh, bills that I'd worked on for years, that we would get it through one house, get it through both houses, the governor veto, uh, just have, have passed. I mean, just crazy things that you wouldn't think of, like having the municipal elections all in November now down here. That's going to revolutionize local government. And, and just to, to pause on that for a second, because so few people vote in those elections, it's been relatively easy for people to, to get elected if they have the right financing. Absolutely. So just it's an incumbent protection. Now legislators can, can run for these offices, which they had a hard time before because they'd have to resign before going into the election. Just it's, it's going to really revolutionize local government here, down here in Las Vegas and, and the other local jurisdictions. Um, you know, the, the thing called surprise billing, where you go to the, go to the emergency room uh, thinking your, your insurance is going to cover it, and all of a sudden you get a bill for $20,000. That thing we worked on forever couldn't get it done. It's passed. Um, same day registration. You can actually register to vote on the day that you uh, register, to, register to vote the same day you do vote. Um, just you know, having felons vote. The thing we did as far as, or I say we, I wish I'd been there, but um, just changing the, the whole criminal justice trajectory from going tougher and tougher to now starting to let look at the at the issue and, and start to, to decriminalize some things and, and make the penalties less and, and allow people to focus on reentry. Just I mean you just you can't believe from from all over the spectrum the things that were passed that uh, we never could get through or we couldn't get through with the government veto. 
I don't think it's it's any surprise that that you are known as one of the more liberal uh, legislators. Period in the state of Nevada, um, there are some progressives that were not happy uh, that things didn't go far enough. Well, and and that's probably their role in life is to always be out there saying we could have done better, could have done better. But um, from my perspective, as somebody who's actually been in the trenches, uh, the, the 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 progressiveness of this thing was just phenomenal. Another issue. Um, it is where, um, you know, they, they um, you couldn't, um, like things that Roberson had done in 2015, like construction defects, um, where he had pushed the envelope so far one way. Now they brought back some sanity to that area. Just little things like that um, that just really are phenomenal. So anyway, I, and the other thing is, you know, changing the, the funding formula for schools. I mean, we've been working on that forever, trying to say that Clark County has different needs and we need to rechange that. They finally have started that process. And now um, we'll have to see what happens, but we actually have been given, we the county commission has been given authority to pass a sales tax for money that would go to sc our school district on top of the DSA, which has never happened in 50 years. It's always been, if we supplement DSA, then that money gets spread around the state. Uh, Marilyn Kirkpatrick will be here in a couple of days uh, to tape a show and uh, it seems like you are the only commissioner at this point <laughs> that is excited about the possibility of raising the sales tax again. Um, you know the argument on the other side is that sales taxes are the most regressive of the taxes and also uh, Mary Lau was saying on the show the other day uh, that uh, the legislature just punted this to the counties. Well. That's one of the things when, when Jim Gibbons was able to put through the two-thirds taxation, we just can't raise taxes anymore. So at some point you have to just say, well, you, gotta, you can't let the perfect get in the way of the good. Uh, I don't like sales tax either, but it's the only tax that, that they can give us the authority to pass. And then hopefully we have two-thirds down here to pass it. But you know, I would love to be able to raise property taxes and other taxes that are, more, that are less regressive. Um, but at the end of the day, we need more money for schools and we need to just step up to the plate. You know, I ran, my campaign platform was give me authority for a one cent sales tax that we can give $400 million to the school district. I, so I publicly ran on that and was obviously was elected. So the, the, the voters are there if they know the money is going to go for a specific thing. If, they, if it just go money in, into the bureaucrats, then they say, no way. But if it's a tax that goes for roads, goes for schools, then I think they support it. But we'll, we'll see here in the coming months. In your conversations with other commissioners so far, um, wh what is the thought? I, I mean, do you think anybody's uh, thinking that they may come over to your side? I think so. I think they're all very serious about looking at it, but the devil's in the details. Um, of course, one of the questions is, what's the school district going to do if we did give them the money? Uh, and what's the county? Every time you talk to the school district or you read about it, it's like, well, we, we thought we had enough money, but now we're 17 million short. We just fired, you know, 170 deans. I mean, it's just one nightmare after another. But I think, honestly, the school district is getting its act together. They're finally starting to get in control of their budget. But we're going to, if we do pass it, we're going to want to make sure that the money that we give them is well spent. We're not just going to throw it in, in the pot. Do you think that uh, this current superintendent is going to survive this? latest series of crises? I do. I mean, I, I've met with the guy. He's, I think he's fantastic. He really wants to do the right thing. He, he quickly understood the big problem. Um, and, and so he's looking at it. But he, he's, you know, he, I think he has the support of the, of, the, of the school board, and he certainly has my support. I mean, nobody's perfect. And, and the way he rolled out the getting rid of the deans was wrong. But the truth is, that model of having deans do um, uh, discipline is wrong. It's basically like the criminal justice system. You know, you punish somebody, you expel them, you send them to another school. We should we should have a holistic approach where whatever the kid's problem is, let's find out what, why what's their situation at home. Let's deal with it at the school. Don't expel them for nothing. And then, you know, we want to make sure the teachers have support if they have a problem in their in their classroom. But that doesn't mean you you criminalize the student. And it's like, well, everybody says, well, let the parents take care. Most of these kids don't. The parents are, are absentee. They're not really paying attention. So anyway, I just I, I, I really support the guy. All right, let's take a break. More with Tick Sega Bloom when we come back. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. Come visit Design Outdoor's store and backyard to see our wide selection of fire pits, barbecues, and pizza ovens, natural stone water features, and fountains, and frost-proof pottery. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. 
Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. One of the most psychologically damaging things parents can do to children in divorce is disparage one another, which is why I can't believe I even have to make this commercial. Half of your kids' genetics come from this person you're spewing hate about. Your children have the right to love you both, but more than that, they deserve to love themselves. Marilyn York might be a men's rights divorce attorney, but this is for every selfish parent. Shut up. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at Remax Realty Affiliates. A lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at Remax Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Clark County Commissioner Tick Segablum. Um, were you surprised that Victoria Seaman won her, uh, her race for the Las Vegas City Council? That puts two pretty conservative women on that city council. Pretty conservative is an understatement. Those people are off the charts, and I was. Um, but, you know, it's a special election, so she only got 40%, and the Republicans turned out. Um, and that's another reason why we need to change these elections to um, even years, because um, in these low 10% turnout, um, you know, you're going to get a very, very conservative turnout. And when we look at it, the flip side is now they'll be in general elections, we're going to have a much more democratic turnout. And so I'm hopeful that those two positions, we can, we can um, knock them off uh, when they're up in 2000, I think, 22. Um, let's go back to the session here. Um, water, of course, was a huge topic at this session. Were you satisfied with the stalemate that came out of it? Yes. I mean, I, I, obviously, it'd be nice to have a bill that just says we're not going to go north and take the water. But the fact is, um, everybody I talked to that, that doesn't want the, the taking water from the north and bringing it to Las Vegas ended up happy. They were concerned up until the very end, but they, they were ended up happy. So. It worked out. Um, Senator Reid, in uh, one of his last speeches to the Las Vegas Metro Chamber, said that the most important thing for the chamber to do uh, was to bring the water down from uh, eastern Nevada down to Las Vegas. It was far more beneficial to be flushing toilets in the casinos on the Strip than it was growing alfalfa. You know, I, I love Senator Reid, and 99% of the time I agree with him. I'm trying to name the airport after him, but the fact is he's wrong on this issue. It is, it is, it is criminal to steal water from one part of the state and bring it down here. If they want to you know, pay for desalinization in California and then let keep some of California's water here maybe, but we, we also waste a ton of water. That we can do much better with the way we control water. And with, with climate change, we're gonna have less water. So let's, let's focus on what we use and, and not just willy-nilly you know, growing and wasting water that we're doing right now. Okay, when, when you talk about wasting water, are you talking about agricultural water? Because I mean, no, you know, I'm Pat Leroy will be chasing you down the hallway here. No, in Las Vegas, we use too much water. Do you, you know we actually have a quarter cent sales tax in Las Vegas that's used to subsidize the water rates? I mean, why would you subsidize water rates when we know that it's elastic? So the higher the cost of water, the less water you use. Right now, we're encouraging people to use water and subsidizing with a quarter cent sales, like $100 million in just for, set for water rates. Yeah, but on the other hand, um, the Southern Nevada Water Authority leads the world in saving water. I mean, people are coming literally from all over the world to look at what we're doing here. All they do is, is buy up grass, and that's, 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 that doesn't take rocket science. I mean, we should have drip emitters, we should have electric technology. There's all kinds of stuff we can do that we're not doing. And I don't blame them, you know, the will is, you know, I'm on the, on the water authority. We need to, to um, um, there's lots of things we can do. We need to encourage that stuff. But right now it's just like everybody's looking the other way. 
Well, and the other thing I just wanted to address, um, just to put the other side out there, is you said steal the water from eastern uh, Nevada. The Southern Nevada Water Authority owns that water. It bought those ranches. <laughs> it bought those water rights, did it not? I, that's a question. What water rights did they buy? I mean, are you allowed to pump water that, that more than the recharge rate? But the fact is, you shouldn't be able to take water from one basin to another basin. Uh, that's just wrong. And, and that's what I think um, most people agree. Everybody I talk to in Southern Nevada says, we don't want to build a, a $15 billion pipeline. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of better ways to do this than just steal the water. Um, you're, you're going to be a part of this commission for a long time, uh, knowing your uh, election results over the years. Um, you, you know, it, eventually, Ivanpah, that whole region is going to be developed. Where's the water going to come from? And I mean, you can s talk about desalination, but I mean, that's, you know, ask Harry Reid about, you know, the Truckee River Operating Agreement. That took 30 years to get one river operating agreement. That's a little river by comparison with the Colorado. Well, uh, and that's the point. I mean, now we know where the, the, the push is to go to Ivanpah, which I oppose. But the fact is... You do oppose that. Yeah. I mean, we don't want to go outside this valley as far as growth goes. We can... This valley is, is, is small, but if we build up instead of out, we can all fit in here. All so right. all so right. let's, let's look at, at making Las Vegas more dense, um, get transportation under control, get the schools under control, and not worry about moving to California. And Dina Titus tried that, ring around the valley. Didn't work back then. But we will talk again. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Always a right. pleasure. Thank you. And we'll be right back. A bird's eye captures its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culp of Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culpa Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Ah! Hey, Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this! Wow! This stuff is great! People are gonna love it! Yes. Yes, they were. St. Ives Florist, for every holiday and every special occasion. For romance. Custom home design. We have the largest selection of fresh flowers in Northern Nevada. And we also offer a large selection of unique gift items. Come see me, Lori Ann, at St. Ives Florist, 700 South Wells Avenue, or call me at 333-9190. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Our thanks to the Las Vegas Metro Chamber for hosting us. And always, you can catch all of our shows at NevadaNewsmakers.com and on YouTube. We'll see you on the next broadcast.